so what we are starting off with is uh, properties of a certain group called group 17 those elements in that group are known as halogens and group 17 is what you might also recognize as group 7 in the periodic table these are the group 17 elements now just as a recap the reason why they call 17 is because the first two columns are groups 1 and 2 and then there is a whole transition element block in the middle and that actually is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 all the way. And this earlier used to be group 3, now it's called group 13. And group 14, group 15, 16 and 17. Noble gases are actually group number 18. So we have these five elements in group 17 called halogens. They ha the reason why they're called halogens is because that's the Latin term for salt makers. These guys actually react very well with groups 1 and 2 to make neutral salts, ionic compounds. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine. And they all are very unique. They all have some very nice properties in terms of their physical state, their color, their reactivity. All that stuff is important and uh, they take part in a multitude of reactions. Both the actual elements of this group, which are called halogens, and even the uh, anions that we study later, and those anions are called halides. So these halogens are actually reactive non-metals. So they're very reactive, first of all. Understand that these guys are reactive. And they are non-metals, meaning they don't conduct current in the solid state or liquid state. Which also means they have a simple molecular structure. Okay? Now they're so reactive that most of them are found as only compounds. But... They themselves are, uh, uh, if you were to find them in their physical state as pure elements, you'd find them as gases and liquids and solids, all three formations. And the reason why they're gases and liquids are because they exist at diatomic molecules. So some of the properties that these guys have, these, f these guys from group 17 are, they're diatomic, meaning they are like X2. They are simple molecular structures. And if you remember the idea from bonding, if something is a simple molecular structure, they would have intermolecular forces, which means that they will have a weak, uh, either in this case, because they're nonpolar, they have induced dipole, instantaneous dipole attractions, which makes them weak. And that's why they have low melting and boiling points. Yeah. They're all volatile, meaning they'll vaporize easily. Volatile. Okay. Why? Because they have weak van der Waals forces. So they'll vaporize easily. And also remember, these guys are reactive as elements. They are highly reactive. Okay? And uh, generally, therefore, found as halides. Therefore, found in compounds. So found as halides in your compounds. Now the next thing we want to see is uh, at the atomic level their electronic configuration because they are in the same group they are going to have similar electronic configurations and what are those? This is some of the configurations for example fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine the first guy his configuration ends in 2p5 chlorine ends in 3p5 bromine 4p5 iodine 5p5 so these guys in their uh, outermost shell are always going to be S two P five. These are that's what you need to realize that. So, if they're in the second period like fluorine, it'll be two S two two P five. Third period for chlorine, three S two three P five. Bromine is fourth period, four S two four P five. Fifth period, five S two five P five. Therefore, the next guy acetine. You can even figure out what this configuration will end in. It's sixth period, so that will be. 6s2 6p5 yeah so you'll have to know that and if you notice all of these guys are just one short of an octet so the outermost shell has seven electrons and the one short of an octet so seven electrons in the outermost shell they'll gain one so generally the way each of these atoms reacts for example fluorine is each atom will gain an electron to become f minus which is called the anion halide or in this case fluoride but obviously if they exist as diatomic molecules they will be cl2s which means that they'll gain two electrons to become two chlorides in this case so that's what you see 
all of these elements will gain one electron to become the halide. So genetically, you can say that one atom of X will gain one electron to become X minus, which is a halide. And I'm sure you've studied this earlier. There's nothing new for me. Yeah. But we'll probably take on this uh, in more detail going ahead. So moving on from this, after seeing the electronic configuration, the next thing I want to show you is their uh, physical state and the color at room temperature. So here we have four jars, each containing the top one of the top four halogens in the PRA table. For example, the guy on the left, leftmost is fluorine. You know, that fellow is F two fluorine. And then we got Cl two. Then is bromine Br two, and the last is iodine I two. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. You are to know their colors. So this is the physical state. So uh, these guys are found as gases. So let me just fill some of the data out here. So for example, uh, fluorine is found as gas at room temperature. Chlorine is also found as gas at room temperature. Bromine at room temperature, you should know as an element is going to be a liquid. And iodine is a solid at room temperature. The reason why these jars are colored is because we've been able to vaporize some of the liquid in bromine and also vaporize some of the solid iodine right here. So but this is their colors. You have to know their colors. For example, this guy is yellow, green, red, brown, and violet vapor. And as a solid, it has a different color. So be able, oh, you have to learn these colors. For example, okay, fluorine is yellow. A pale yellow, but yellow. So it's a yellow gas. While um, chlorine is a green gas. Bromine is a red-brown liquid. And obviously, at room temperature, it's a liquid. But it can also vaporize to so give you also red-brown gas. Iodine is the most special. For iodine, you gotta learn this. Now, so iodine, I2, solid has a different color, and I2, vapor has a different color. I2 solid is gray. You see, you can say gray solid. But as a gas, it is a violet vapor. Violet vapor. Now, these are given in the notes also, you should learn these. You have to know these four, these four, their actual colors, and the physical states. Yellow gas, green gas, red brown liquid, and if you vaporize it, it's also red brown gas. Iodine at room temperature is solid, which is gray solid, but if I vaporize this, it'll be a violet vapor, all right? And you have to learn this. They will ask you this. The physical state and the color of halogens, all right? Now, I'm looking at a table right here, which summarizes the top four halogens. Now, we really don't even study fluorine. It's here because of the actual color, but you will never need to study fluorine. Your syllabus explicitly asks you to study for chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Their colors in both uh, their natural state and for iodine, it's a vapor state also. Yellow, green, red, brown, violet vapor, and gray solid. Their configurations, we've seen that now. And the other properties we have done already earlier, they're reiterated now. The fact that atomic radius down the group increases, the ionic radius down the group also increases, and the ionic radius is larger than the atomic radius. And the reason why our ionic radius is larger than the atomic radius is because the ionic radius has more electrons. There is a little more repulsion, less attraction, the anion is larger. And down the group, you should also know that ionization energies decrease. And that also has been done before. Because down the group, the shielding effect increases and the distance increases, which outweigh the increase in nuclear charge. Therefore, ionization energy increases. So that's the kind of stuff that you have to remember. All right, that's the, that, was the, that part was done when we were doing uh, periodic trends. And the next thing you gotta do is their boiling points. 
which by the way are dependent on the strength of their intermolecular forces or the strength of their instantaneous dipole induced dipole attraction which by the way depends on the number of electrons so let's take a look at that I'm going to scroll down so this is the uh, a graph to show you the increase in boiling points between fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine as the mass increases, boiling point increases. Now what's indicative of the mass? The mass isn't really the important factor. What does the mass indicate? That electrons are increasing. So when you go from fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine, what's happening along this route? Electrons are increasing. And if electrons increase, what happens? The strength of van der Waals forces due to induced dipoles increases. The idea is that as the number of electrons increase, there is the strength of uh, instantaneous dipole to induced dipole attraction increases, which means boiling points and melting points will increase. So that's the kind of stuff that you'll have to remember. This is why iodine is a solid while chlorine is a gas. Because I, it's not because of anything but the fact that in iodine, there are more electrons, therefore the strength of its induced dipole to instantaneous dipole attraction will be greater than that in chlorine. All right. Now, if you notice, fluorine and chlorine's boiling point is below zero degrees. Room temperature is somewhere here, twenty-five degrees, right there. So now, since chlorine and bromine's fluid boiling point is below room temperature, they are gases, while bromine's is greater. So that's a liquid. So that's why fluorine and chlorine are gases and bromine is a liquid. All right.